be on the ball. To be quick to understand and react to things. Examples. I, I was so nervous that I was with you, I kept sweating through my shirt, so I was running to the bathroom to use the hand dryer to like, <laughs> what, this isn't funny, don't laugh. I'm not, I'm, I'm really trying not to. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm usually very on the ball with these things. Stop. How irresponsible do you all think I am? We don't think you're irresponsible. We think you're fun-loving. <laughs> that is just a nice word for irresponsible. Hmm. You might be more on the ball than we thought. <laughs> get someone's wires crossed, to get confused, mixed up, or make a mistake, to have a different understanding of the same situation. Examples. Hey. Hi, Ava. I was just wondering if the girls were done with the movie yet. What movie? Breakfast Club. They never ended up here. They didn't? No. Do you want to speak to Riley? I, I don't know. I must have got my wires crossed. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay, ladies. Thanks so much for your help. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you both for being so patient. And Mrs. Ahern, if you or Margaret ever need anything from me, anything at all, you can call me day or night. This is Mrs. Schmasko and her daughter, Jen. Uh, I'm sorry, I got my wires crossed a little. Uh... Bye. Shift or switch gears. To start thinking or acting in a new way. To suddenly change what you are doing. Examples. We should focus on the verb answers. Cool. I love verbs. Second favorite part of speech. After, after prepositions. prepositions. <laughs> yeah, words are cool. But maybe we should switch gears a bit and get back to some good old-fashioned police work. What are you thinking? If you're gonna ask me sex advice, please buy me a glass of wine first. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, switching gears. I'd love to discuss the uh, principal vacancy. Look, you're gonna have to shift gears. What do you mean? It's time to take a dive. No winning streak lasts forever. Okay, you're 6-0. That's the best driver this county's seen since yours truly. Now that means all the money's on you. Not my cup of tea. If something is not your cup of tea, it is not the type of thing that you like. Examples. Not my cup of tea. Uh oh. What if it's Jennifer Lawrence? <laughs> what? No, oh, that last Hunger Games was not my cup of tea. You thought she was great in X Men. No, oh, fine. I won't shut my heart to the love of Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> have a bone to pick with. To want to talk to someone about something annoying they have done. Examples Kim. You have a bone to pick with me, pick away. In fact, you want to lose your shit? That's all right, too. I'm not perfect. I've broken plenty of times. But never in front of the troops. Samantha, my dear, I have a bone to pick with you. I came ready to buy and look. All these red dots, there's nothing left. I have a bone to pick with you. Yes, Ben learned a little trick. Ruffle some feathers. To make someone feel worried or annoyed. To cause someone to be upset. Examples. So you do think I'm annoying? I think that you ask a lot of the people that you work with. And I think that people do what you ask because they love you. But I also think that driving people as hard as you do can ruffle some feathers. Well, all these years, I, I was afraid to say what I wanted. You know, even at work, you know, there's things I want to accomplish, but I didn't want to ruffle any feathers or step on any toes. Feathers and toes? Is a new thing you're trying to accomplish? Ballroom dancing with a chicken? <laughs> well, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> hey, hey, I just figured Joseph's the kind of guy who likes to mix it up. You know, get in there, ruffle some feathers. <laughs> Sweeten the pot. To make something more desirable or attractive. Especially from a financial perspective. Examples. Put that quad in it to go cup. Uh, but I don't get off for another hour. I'll sweeten the pot. Twenty whole dollars. Tempting, but no. 
In fact, here's a little something for you. <laughs> Just because your smile lights up the place. <laughs> you know what, let's sweeten the pot. Um, can you give me 10 back? <laughs> Not a problem. Can't put a price on a smile. Talk or speak out of school. To reveal secret, sensitive, or private information, especially when doing so, will cause problems for someone else. Examples. So Giselle was telling me you two are starting a business. <laughs> Look, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but uh, she's talking out of school. Oh. It's too bad Stuart couldn't make it. He seemed fun. Oh, yeah, he is. I love him dearly. Not to say that I don't worry about him. What's to worry about? You know what? I'm talking out of school. Speaking of which, he's allowed to live near them now. On the fence. To be not able to decide something. Examples. Oh, that decides it then! I was on the fence, but knowing that you two would be our neighbors, oh, now we have to get it. <laughs> Ellen, we're gonna talk numbers. I just want to have dinner with you. Like normal people. Yeah, then I won't go. Really? Yeah, easy. I mean, I was on the fence about it anyway. I mean, Washington's really far away and... Hey, who wants to hear some exciting news? Oh, what's up? This weekend I got us four seats on the Vomit Comet. Oh, you lost me at Vomit, you lost me again at Comet, and to be honest, I was on the fence at us. Sweep under the rug. To hide something that is illegal, unpleasant, or embarrassing, and try to keep it secret. Examples. I think you're forgetting something, Lana. Whatever new lie he told you, however he swept it under the rug, a normal person doesn't rise from the dead. This is an academic. He hasn't done anything wrong. Well, what makes Harvey great at his job is he knows that everybody has done something wrong. Even the most esteemed ethics professor in the country. The cleaner they look, the more dirt they've swept under the rug. She's always had a problem with me. I think I'm gonna find out what it is. That's the worst thing you could do. Just sweep it under the rug. I'm not a sweeper. Be short with someone. To speak to someone using very few words, in a way that seems rude or unfriendly. Examples. Can I ask you something? Huh? When Carol was pregnant with Ben... Mm hmm Were you this irritating? <laughs> wow. Excuse me? Uh, nothing, nothing. You just, uh, you've been a little short with me lately. And here's the thing. You weren't even next in line. I asked about you. I saw your file. You have a history of being short with people, and you hired Glenn your buddy, to replace you in the warehouse. He was underqualified. They saw that. Call the photographers, type service, and vendors and tell them all deliveries should come between 9.30 and 11 so the British can see lots of activity when they arrive. Now. Are you being short with me because you think it'll make parting easier? Why the long face? An informal way of asking someone what's wrong when they look upset. Examples. Hey, why the, why the long faces? Shouldn't we be celebrating here, guys? Listen, we, uh, we talked to the doctor, and uh, it turns out we can't afford the procedure. Guys, <laughs> why the long faces here? I mean, you're sitting on a gold mine. A gold mine we can't sell. Why the long face? That Mexican candy giving you nerve damage again? Good bones. Something considered to be a good, with the potential to be a great. Examples. Great work. Thank you so the much. The script is a great start. Really good bones. Uh, I just have a few headlines. Yeah, totally. Listen, we can tweak dialogue right up to the day of production. That closet is begging to be a half bath. See what we have here? It's called good bones. You understand? Hit the wall, make you... Oh, no! Mm. Excuse me. This is 227 Bayard Street, yes? Bayard. Uh, is just the name. I don't think he speaks English. What would I do without you, Mrs. Moskowitz? It's a mess, but the bones are good. The bones are very good. Chinatown. 
pull strings. To secretly use the influence you have over important people in order to get something or to help someone. Examples. Hey. Hey. Wow. You look nice. What's the occasion? Monica and I are celebrating our 10-month anniversary. Got reservations at Jean Georges. Wow. <laughs> How'd you get in there? I uh, made a few calls, pulled some strings, and... Come on. Don't you know how much I want to see this guy? Can't you pull some strings? I don't have any strings when I've been five or six times. Then maybe I can ask for a favor, but not now. That's what you wear to an interview? <laughs> Come on, dude. We've been friends for years. Oh, pulling strings, are we? <laughs> burst someone's bubble to say or do something that shows someone that their beliefs are false or that what they want to happen will not happen examples yeah well sorry to burst that bubble Phoebes, but selfless good deeds don't exist okay they're kind of unpredictable i don't care for unpredictable so we wait Sorry to burst your bubble, kid, but that's 90% of the job. So, I got the craziest email this morning. I don't mean to burst your bubble, dude, but those penile enlargement pills do not work. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Hit a snag. To have a problem with something. To face a problem or obstacle. Examples. I really know how to say this. We well, can try starting with sir. Right. Sorry, sir. He said start with it, not end with it. <laughs> sir, we've hit a bit of a snag. We're already behind schedule. You just have to sign the papers in person. I'm at the dealership for another hour. I did not think this through. <sighs> Nick, I've hit a snag in my car buying. Well, I'm not surprised you came to me. Give it a whirl to attempt to do something, often for the first time, to give something a try, informal. Examples. What got you excited about dark matter in the first place? Well, I left string theory, which I've been working on for a long time, and everyone was talking about how cool dark matter was, and I thought, well, oh, sure, I'll give that a whirl. How about a hundred bucks? Me and Phil will play you and Mitch. Fun! Mitchell, care to go first? Oh, I... Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. Oh, I think we made the right decision going for the custom-made Italian sheets. Hey, if my bed's gonna suit up, it's gonna do it right. <laughs> Wanna give it a whirl? <laughs> oh. Touch and go refers to the situation in which there is a serious risk that something bad could happen. Very uncertain or critical situation. Examples. How is he? Man with the shrapnel on his side. It's touch and go. You wake up? Yeah, just for a few seconds during the surgery. It's done. Really? You sure? Absolutely. I mean, it was touch and go there for a minute. Half a minute. They were testing a smoke machine, so they couldn't see us too good at first. You know, your daughter's a good lady. You did a great job with her, Jean. Thanks. But it was touch and go for a while. <laughs> Have a falling out. To be in a situation where people are not friends anymore, caused by a disagreement or an argument. Examples. You know, it's so surprising that you and Joey have known each other for so long and I've never heard about you. Oh, that's, uh, that's because we had a bit of a falling out. Mike hit my mom with a car. Ron and I had a little falling out, but we are back, baby. And just like Joey Fatone and Lance Bass, we are totally in sync. Come on, okay. Just give me a... We're in sync emotionally. Stop patting my head. Get out of your hair. To keep away from someone in order to avoid trouble or to avoid annoying them. To stop bothering. Examples. Um, this may be a little weird, but uh, I've got a date here. I almost say no more. We'll just grab some food and take it with us upstairs and we'll be right out of your hair. Oh, yeah. oh that, that, that'd be great. <laughs> Check out your treats. It's November 8th. 
Yes, well, these girls didn't get a chance to go trick-or-treating, so somewhere in this house, there is some candy. Why don't you find it, and we'll get right out of your hair. All right, hold on one second. I'm sorry to have been bugging you all these years. It's a real handsome duck. Mallard. Okay, I'll get out of your hair. Keep your eye on the ball. To give your attention to what you are doing at the time. To continue thinking about or giving attention to something. Examples. Honey, you excited about your first day? You know what? I really am. There's something about going to work that makes you feel like you're, I don't know, worth something. No offense, Mom. Listen, <clears throat> I want to give you some advice. Do it fast. She's going to be late. Work hard. <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball. I'm not thrilled about it. You need to keep your eye on the ball. You deserve to be a lawyer. You're doing good for those miners, and that's all that matters. Well, what are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep my eye on the ball. Emily and I have a future with a plan. No strings attached. Means that an offer or opportunity has no unpleasant conditions, which must be accepted as part of the offer. Examples. I let you live here rent-free. <laughs> All right. And I want you to remember that I gave you $27. <laughs> no strings attached. We're waiting, fiance. Yeah, we're waiting, best friend. Yeah, we're waiting, neighbor who needed a battery and totally got one for me, no strings attached. <laughs> bang for the buck to get a better result for the amount of effort or money informal examples hey give me jimmy that's right that's me you've seen my ad well what i did for me my friends i will do that for you look our all-inclusive premium package that's going to be the best bang for your buck we'll shoot nine commercials for four thousand nine hundred dollars is it the same price well they're all close this sounds better. Well, if you lock them in at this rating and then they exceed it, there's a bang for your buck factor, isn't there? I would say so. Then you should do that. Recently, many of the local restaurants have changed their small size option to a whopping 64 ounces. That's correct. And it's great for the consumer. More bang for the buck. How could any sane person call that small? Well, if the customer truly wants a smaller size, there is an option. Oh, do you mean the little swallow? Straight arrow. Someone who is very honest and careful to behave in a socially acceptable way. Very truthful, reliable, and morally upright. Examples. Crime scene. House. What's going on in there? Is everyone all right? About to be. Assuming he's not lying. He seems like a pretty straight arrow to me. <sighs> Hector wants to use my dad's business. My dad is a straight arrow, he won't stand for it, which means he goes to the police, which means he's a dead man. And that's not happening. Give a heads up. To warn someone, especially about future difficulty, trouble, or danger. To tell someone about something before it happens. Examples. What's wrong with you? You told Sheldon? Do you know what a terrible position this puts me in? Hang on, please. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, just a heads up. Penny knows that you blabbed about Leonard. She's pretty mad. We got this. We'll clean. Oh. Uh, oh. you're cleaning up? What kind of day is this? Cam and Mitch get a new son. You got a new daughter. It was really fun, you guys. Yeah, next time let's do it at our place. I'm in. Just give me a heads up. The cat out of the bag. To allow a secret to be known, usually without intending to. Examples. Hey, wait, are you even old enough to drink? Yes, Julia, I am, but I can't because I'm pregnant. You're what? Oh, boy. I didn't mean to steal your spotlight, but the cat's out of the bag. Young Ben is going to have a new baby sister. Jim, why didn't you tell me that you had a crush on Pam? 
Well, the cat's out of the bag. I used to have a crush on Pam, and now I don't. Get wind of it. To hear a piece of information that someone else was trying to keep secret. Examples. Look, Edie. I I'm doing this for you. If the IRS gets wind of your rainy day fund, they could make me testify against you. Oh, jeez. Didn't take the media long to get wind of this. Make sure no one contaminates my crime scene. Uh, well, what's your biggest fish? I mean, to your mind, who's, uh, who's your whale? <laughs> um, Nike? Women's division? You heard they were shopping? I got wind of it. The whole nine yards. Everything you can possibly want, have, or do in a particular situation. Examples. We, we should celebrate. Really? We'll go to a steakhouse, get a couple bottles of red wine, some tiramisu, the whole nine yards. If someday you decide you want to get married, you have to propose to me. Really? Yes. It's all on you. But I got to tell you, when the time comes, I want the whole nine yards. I want you down on one knee, flowers. I want to be swept off my feet. That's why Jimmy wants to kill you, because if he kills you... And Yanni, let's not forget about Yanni. Then he gets the money. All of it. The whole nine yards. Second wind. A return of strength or energy that makes it possible to continue in an activity or start again. Examples. What am I supposed to do? I watched them last night so you could work and now... I'll be home in a little bit. Well, I don't like you working so hard. You must be exhausted. Actually, I've got a second wind. Got it. Losing it. Losing it. Losing it. Holding it. Losing it. Second wind. Got it. Got it. First Avenue. First Avenue Station. There, there. Put it down. <gasps> be off the grid. Be not connected to any of the main utilities. Electricity, water, etc. Be isolated. Not participating in some official process or system. Examples. What are you working on? I'm removing my digital footprint from the internet so Amy Farrah Fowler can't find me and compel me to meet her mother. Oh, you're going off the grid. Exactly. Well, why are you sitting on a train? Where are you going? Running away from your problems won't solve anything. You know that. I don't know that. Your creditors can follow you anywhere with ease. Your debt follows you around the world, electronically. I'll stay off the grid. Oh, Michael, come on. Come on, you can deal with this. It's not that bad. That's great. Now they know where I live. What are you talking about? They've always known where you live. Yeah, if you want to go off the grid, you have to move out of your mother's house. <laughs> the ins and outs. All the details. The details about how something works or is done. Examples. So let's hear it. Okay, I have spent the last 15 years learning the ins and outs of the paper industry with a lean, mean fighting crew and low overhead. I think I can perform the same business at a much, much higher rate of profit. Are there any other tenants who have been here for a while? You know, who might be able to show us the ins and outs of the place, the neighborhood? Well, the building was totally renovated two years ago, so most of our tenants are newer. You really should talk to Erin. She knows all the ins and outs. Ins and outs. Erin yeah, sure knows those. Be my guest. Means please do. Used in speech to give someone permission to do or use something. Examples. So get this. Robin never deleted Don's number. Boo. Oh, oh, everyone thinks it's so easy. Give me your phone. Let's delete one of yours. Uh, okay. Mm. No problem. If you can find a number that I don't need or shouldn't have in here, be my guest. But good luck. I keep my phone tight. The guy is so charming that I go up there to yell, and then I end up apologizing to him. Oh, that is silly. <laughs> I'll go up there. I'll tell him to keep it down. All right, be my guest. Good luck. Oh, yeah. You like it? Can I take a look? Oh, be my guest. Get in. <laughs> Check it out. Have something up someone's sleeve. 
To have a secret plan that you can surprise someone with. To have or keep a secret method, trick, etc. Examples. Sure, you may have swiped our entire strategy for this case, but I still got some tricks up my sleeve that you know absolutely nothing about. Mrs. Hodge, it's state law. What do you want me to say? I want you to say that for $300 an hour, you have some lawyer tricks up your sleeve to help me protect my business. Surely you're not asking me to do something criminal. Have your cake and eat it too. To have or do two good things at the same time that are impossible to have or do at the same time. Examples. I have all those associates to help cover Mesa Verde. It'll keep paying the bills and free me up to do the work I really care about. I see you kind of get to have your cake and eat it too. Kind of, yeah. I bet it's Richard. <laughs> Why would Monica be keeping Richard in here? Off the top of my head, uh, maybe she's having her cake and eating it too. You being the cake, Richard being the two. Be back on track. To continue as planned or expected. Typically after a problem or distraction. Go in the right direction again after a mistake or failure. Examples. I'm gonna get some coffee. You want some? Uh, you're really going to have caffeine in front of me when I'm trying to get my life back on track? <laughs> uh, okay, let's pretend you do have a problem. I do. You don't. Yeah, but I No, do. you don't! <laughs> I'm just so happy that Ben and I are starting our life together and my future is finally back on track. Martha, I want to lease this house. Great. Okay. We're going to come back with a plan for you. It's a 45-day plan. 45 days to get us back on track. Yeah. Get or keep someone in line. To make someone behave in the way you want them to. To conform to something generally accepted, such as rules, beliefs, or mode of behavior. Examples. I don't like this attitude, and I am sure that Kylie won't like it either. Maybe you do need somebody like her to keep you in line while I am not around. What are you doing? I think if you really like this guy, you should just be honest. You should tell him that you feel a little hurt. Oh, yeah, whining is really going to bring him to his knees. You want to get this guy back in line? You hit him hard, hit him fast. Is he the jealous type? The two of you need to get your women in line. <laughs> what? Your gal pals, Penny and Bernadette, went out shopping for some wedding nonsense without Amy. What do you want us to do about it? You clearly weren't listening to my topic sentence. Get your women in line! Pick up on something. To notice something that other people have not noticed. To give particular attention to something that someone has said or done. Examples. Stella is not suicidal. She's just... It's stupid. Well, that might be part of your problem. She senses you don't like her. You have no idea. This one's been against this little angel from the very beginning. Yeah, well, dogs pick up on that. You know, they're very sensitive. I have never said a negative word about them dating, ever. I believe you. It's just, you don't have to say anything. It's the way you act when she's around. Kids pick up on that stuff. Mom, I'm not an idiot. I pick up on things. And mm -hmm. I don't think that you were the good girl you pretend you were. Wow, that is so untrue. I was a very good girl. Sweep me off my feet. To make someone become suddenly and completely in love with you or attracted to you in a romantic way. Examples. She's okay. I just, I don't know. I just don't get a really good vibe from her. Why? I don't know. You know, just the way she waltzed in here, all smart and... Tall, you know, and just swept Joey off his feet. I mean, nobody else has a chance. Who else? You came here to tell me that you dumped your girlfriend, sweep me off my feet, and the two of us would, what, sail off into the sunset together? I don't know if I want to cook for him. He's kind of a picky eater. I mean, it's too salty, it's too dry, it's too burnt and frozen at the same time. <laughs> What else would sweep you off your feet? Well... 
You made your bed, now lie in it. Used as a response to people who have been complaining about problems they have brought on themselves. Examples. <sighs> to my knees, Don. They're bringing me to my knees. Sorry to hear that. I made my bed, I should lie in it, right? Your word's not mine. Uh, Karen, this is Jill. She was hey, Hank's teaching that, assistant yeah, this yeah, semester. Yeah, and and that's Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't I come with you guys? Back. We can hang out, <laughs> turn us a lip gloss, you know, sparkly. You made your bed. Yeah, and now you're gonna have to lie in it. Have fun, mm -hmm. Hank. One night, just till his bone sets. Yeah, but there's always going to be a reason not to tell him, isn't there? OK, what if we... Um... No, 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 we. You made your bed. You lie in it. Don't lie there. I just made it. Stir the pot. To deliberately try to make a situation or people more tense and upset. Examples. He so doesn't want us there. Yes, he does. Mm, it was kind of a last minute invite. Just stir in the pot. Why wouldn't Holt want us there? It's Mrs. Lambert's herpes test results. This is who? You've told more than one patient his wife is sleeping with his daughter's karate teacher. You want to stir the pot, you have to clean up the mess. I have a gossip problem. I stir the pot, Jeff. I'm a pot stirrer. Hold down the fort. To take responsibility for a situation while another person is temporarily away. Examples. Oh, Orson, I'm glad you're here. I was doing a recount of the goblets for the Hopkins wedding reception, and we're short by about 30. So mm. I have to run over to the supplier and pick up the rest. Could you hold down the fort for me? Sure, no problem. Hold down the fort. I have to do something. Articles, interviews. Oh, you want us to do interviews? Uh, well, we're thinking a divide and conquer approach here, where you do the interviews and Sheldon stays here and holds down the fort, you know. A diamond in the rough. A person who is generally of good character, but lacks manners, education, or style. Something that is in poor condition, but that is likely to become valuable with appropriate care or attention. Examples. Carlos is a diamond in the rough. A flawed man to be sure, but someone who is desperately searching for something to believe in. How do you like being a father, Alan? Uh, well, you know, I'd, I'd have to say that it's wonderfully rewarding and, and more than a little challenging. <laughs> Jake's kind of a diamond in the rough. Now this place is a real diamond in the rough. Cozy little two bedroom plus den with a highly motivated seller. Oh look, a highly motivated cockroach. Go out of someone's way to make a special effort to do something. To try very hard to do something, especially for someone else. Examples. That's easy to say, but I need you to show me. How? With a vasectomy. Can I just get you some flowers? Look, it makes perfect sense. We're not going to have any more kids. It is what married people do. They go out of their way to calm each other's irrational fears. Why do you think he's here? Should we go and try and find him? I mean, what if it has nothing to do with this? Well, I, for one, am not going to go out of my way to find out. Cold feet. To suddenly become too frightened to do something you had planned to do especially something important, such as getting married. Examples. Phil Dunphy. Phil, it's Barbara. The Pattersons want to back out of the deal. Why? What happened? The wife's getting cold feet. I told her to call you. OK, fine. I'll handle it. I'm not losing this sale. Jay, I'm scared. I'm not sure I want to go through with it. We didn't drive all the way down here for that piece of paper for you to get cold feet at the last second. And what happened anyway? You've been looking forward to this day for months. I know. Situation number one. You're with Monica. The wedding is about to start when Monica gets cold feet. Go! I don't want to marry Chandler. Overstep my bounds. To go beyond what is proper or allowed. To do something that is not acceptable. Examples. Listen, I don't want to overstep my bounds. This is your house, and you're free to bring into it whoever or whatever you choose. But I, I do think that I have the right to protect Jake from being exposed to certain people. 
Nolan, I'm very sorry that I overreacted and overstepped my bounds. I understand. When I got into the chart game, I knew I'd ruffle some feathers. Click the moves on someone. To do or say things in an effort to start a romantic or sexual relationship with someone. Examples. After an impressive six-course dinner, Ed put the moves on Samantha. Ed's moves were from a different dating time. Moves Samantha had heard of or seen in old movies, but moves she never thought she'd experience firsthand. That's so sweet, but what if I didn't like it? It'd still be you, but I'd feel like an idiot. <laughs> I don't believe it. Stuart's putting the moves on Penny. I have got to learn how to draw. Wedding goggles. <laughs> exactly. And that, in a nutshell, is why I'm not putting the moves on you. This isn't the moves? Well, you, you think this is the moves? Believe me. You'd know the moves. People 10 tables away would know the moves. I rest my case. Used to say, when you believe that something that has just happened, or been said, proves that you are right, or telling the truth. Examples. I'm a guy guy. Oh, please. You made me come in your room to kill a spider. I'm allergic. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Some guys fix things, and some guys call the guys that fix things. You know, right after they watch Project Runway. Oh, I didn't see it last night. Don't tell me, don't tell me. I rest my case. He's lying. I can tell from the way he's playing with his hair. No, I, I think you really got to it. Say it. Okay, fine. Cam. Cam's the one, all right? Cam's the one I'm worried about. He's the one who's going to be left behind. I rest my case. Rub someone's nose in something. To remind someone about something unpleasant. To say or do things that make someone remember that they failed or got something wrong. Examples. I'm sorry you didn't get your vengeance. But I am still planning to get some retribution. I got her a parting gift. Tickets to Wicked? In Boston. She's moving to a second class city and I wanted to rub her nose in it. In a minute, I want to show Howard I can play this game. You know, you make a lot more money than he does. Can't you just rub his nose in that? <laughs> but I want to rub his nose in this. That's just perfect. Something you want to say, Mitchell? Yes, I told you so. I warned you this would happen. I tried to stop it, but you wouldn't let me. I was right and you were wrong. You live in this ridiculous candy-colored fantasy land. I am so much smarter than you, and it is killing me not to rub your nose in it. Step on someone's toes. To upset someone, especially by getting involved in something, that is that person's responsibility. Examples. We can have take charge attitudes. Then why didn't either of you ask to be team leader? We didn't want to step on anyone's toes. <laughs> yeah, so we were just waiting for you to tell us who you thought, to... okay, I hear it. <laughs> oh my goodness, Sarge. What are the Chances! I say zero. Oh, I mean, when Genevieve got me these suspenders, I thought I'd lean into it and go for the whole look, but I didn't want to step on your toes. That being said, you know what this means. I am so excited to be your co-anchor! <laughs> Yay! Hi, Becky. My, you're perky. Don't worry. I am not here to step on your toesies. Oh. You are still the star. For a rainy day, used in reference to a possible time in the future, when money will be needed. Examples. The, the lesson here is that when a little extra money comes our way, we do the smart thing and we put it in the bank where it makes reasonable interest at minimal risk. And then we have it for a rainy day. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, I'm only taking this because I'm a little worried about making rent and they told me the procedure for selling eggs takes three weeks. You save your eggs for a rainy day. I'll see you tomorrow. You might be more on the ball than we thought. Oh, sorry, I just get my wires crossed a little. A sweet pot. It's a mess, but the bones are good. The bones are very good. My future is finally back on track. Well, the cat's out of the bag. I rest my case.